I was asked to try something smaller than a quail egg. You guys, smaller than a quail egg? <laughs> okay, uh, can you guess what species of bird laid this egg? First, I'll need to change out my small kiska tip for an extra, extra fine. <laughs> Fill it up with melted wax, which is the most satisfying part to watch. Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> and then hold my breath so I don't puncture through this paper-thin shell while I write on it. I have to wear gloves while holding this egg because no matter how clean my hands are, any oils at all will affect how this fragile shell accepts dye. Honestly, at this point, I can't believe I made it this far and it's still intact, but the next steps are even more treacherous. Here I am working on the tiniest egg of my career and I have to keep my chill because I cannot believe how well this is turning out. It's my first time working with this particular species, and I have to say I'm thrilled with the dye coverage on this. Not every bird shell likes dye. Ducks, for example, are extremely hydrophobic, so they just don't take color very well. But look at this. One little roll, and it's already turning green. Oh, I love it. The further I get on this tiny egg, the more excited I am, and I kind of have to stop every once in a while and just jump up and down because I cannot wait to see how this will look in the end. You'll notice this Beethoven piece is also light and delicate, which does not mean it's easy. It takes a lot of skill to be clear and quiet in an orchestra. Oh, look at this egg! You have to see what I do with it next. <laughs> look at my face! I am so proud of myself! I can't believe I lined up six stars without crushing this teeny tiny egg. And it was hollow while I worked on it, but now I will fill it with resin and coat it with resin so it can be durable enough for a necklace. I can't decide between the yellow tassel or a blue tassel, but no matter what, I will be making more of these.